Why does California have so many prisons? California is a world leader in incarceration. The Golden State built 23 major new prisons between 1984 and 2004. The California State prison population increased fivefold during this time, even though the crime rate peaked in 1980 and declined thereafter. What happened? Why did California engage in this massive prison building project? Why did California start building prisons after the crime rate had begun to decline? The answers to these questions can be found through a consideration of economic restructuring in California. During World War II, California's prosperity was tied to defense contracts. After the war, California invested in education and technology to ensure that defense contracts would continue. These efforts were successful and California's economy became heavily reliant on the defense industry. These defense contracts generated excellent jobs for one sector of the labor market, but left many people out, creating significant inequality in the labor market. Then in the 1980s, the Department of Defense drastically cut its spending, which shocked California's defense-reliant economy. California lost one-third of its jobs in the transportation equipment, primary metal, and electronic sectors between 1980 and 1995. While California lost hundreds of thousands of high paying manufacturing jobs tied to the defense industry, it gained tens of thousands of low paying manufacturing jobs in textile and apparel industries, further entrenching inequality in the labor market. These changes also led to increasing unemployment by 1982, 10% of Californians were unemployed. In her acclaimed book, Golden Gulag, Ruth Wilson Gilmore explains that shifts in California's political economy led to surpluses of labor, land, finance capital, and state capacity. The shift of California's economy away from the defense industry led to a surplus of labor in urban centers. As the economy changed, many workers became superfluous in the new economic landscape. Prisons served the double purpose of providing employment to tens of thousands of Californians and locking away a good proportion of the surplus labor force. Consecutive droughts led to a surplus of agricultural land in the Central Valley. Landholders were anxious to sell their surplus land and the California Department of Corrections stepped in to make handsome offers. 18 of the 23 new prisons built between 1984 and 2004 were sited on formerly irrigated agricultural land. At the start of one of California's recessions in 1980, interest rates skyrocketed and the prime rate hit 21 percent these high interest rates created a surplus of finance capital with more people wanting to lend money than people able to borrow under these conditions of surplus the state was able to borrow money to build prisons under capitalism the over accumulation of surplus leads to crisis and Gilmore argues that the state of California sought a prison fix to this crisis. The confluence of surplus labor, land, and finance capital created the conditions of possibility for a massive prison building project in California. The California legislature attempted to use mass incarceration as a solution to the state's rampant poverty, unemployment, and inequality. Decades later, California has dozens of prisons and an extremely high incarceration rate. 
Yet these problems of poverty, unemployment, and inequality persist. The Great Recession from 2007 to 2009 finally gave elected leaders the political will to make cuts to the prison system. In 2009, after 30 years of prison expansion, California found itself with a massive prison system it was no longer able to finance and began to release prisoners to cut costs. Today, the U.S. incarceration rate is at its lowest level in 20 years. But despite a decade of declining incarceration rates, the United States still incarcerates a larger share of its population than any other country in the world. 